A senior military official said Monday the United States is not changing its nuclear posture. In other words, they see no reason to assume Russia is on the verge of using nuclear weapons in Ukraine. But the very fact that the topic comes up shows concern about what Vladimir Putin could do after Russian forces suffered a series of setbacks on the battlefield. Ukrainian troops are retaking territory and advancing in many areas Russia illegally annexed just days ago. CBS's Charlie Dagada has the latest. Ukrainian tanks take up position, holding the line in recaptured territory in eastern Ukraine. Reinforcements after Russian troops were forced to retreat from the strategic town of Lehman. Ukraine's president thanking his warriors, saying the successes of our soldiers are not limited to Lehman. A reference to lightning advances in the south. This video said to show soldiers raising the flag in a retaken village toward Kherson. But after President Putin's illegal annexation on Friday, many here are bracing for a massive escalation, including the exiled mayor of Russian-held Melitopol. I expect that uh, Putin will use nuclear weapons. You do? Yes, I expect it. Yes. Uh, he's a crazy. His forces have already stepped up attacks on civilian targets. Take a look at this crater. It's not exactly clear what the intended target was, but a massive Russian missile completely destroyed a home in this residential neighborhood. Neighbors tell us a grandmother, a mother, and two small children were killed as they slept. The world may be getting used to scenes like these. Not if you lived in this neighborhood, where two school kids went to sleep, unaware of what the night would bring. There are more explosions here in Dnipro overnight and this morning. Yet tonight, Ukrainian forces are on the move, and there's a real sense of momentum as they claw back Russian-held territory. John? Charlie Daggett, thank you. Former ambassador to Ukraine, John Herbst, joins me now. John is also senior director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. John, thank you so much for being with us. Um, military observers say that Russia is doomed on the battlefield, um, that they're losing and that the problems can't be fixed no matter how many conscription orders they issue, um, but that that momentum that Charlie Daggett had talked about is real and, and has uh, Russia in an, in an irreversibly bad position. Do you agree with that assessment? I think that's a, a, a the right analysis for the short in the medium term. By that, I mean for the next three to six months. Uh, but we should, not, we should not underestimate Russian forces. They could find more troops, although they're doing it in a very, very incompetent way with this current mobilization. And they obviously have lots of weapons. But the momentum is with Ukraine. And if we gave Ukraine more sophisticated weapons, they might be able to take back much of the country before the Russians could uh, assemble a force that might have some fighting capability. They don't have that force right now. And, and, Ambassador, what's your sense of this nuclear question, which always comes up and which Vladimir Putin uh, uses and threatens periodically? Um, again, in Charlie Daggett's report, there is the expectation in Ukraine, at least in some quarters, that, that he would use tactical nuclear weapons. Is this something that, uh, well, what's, just, what's your assessment of that as a realistic possibility in this conflict? Well, any sober statesman has to take this into serious consideration. But it's true that Putin has developed over time a um, persona which says he's like a rat in a corner. If he's going to be cornered, he's going to be more dangerous than ever. And that is a psychological trip designed to enable him to bluff people. The point is that Putin might use nuclear weapons. I don't think he will, but he might. And we have to send a strong message, which I believe over the past 10 days the Biden administration has done, that he will pay a very heavy cost for it. We will not let it simply stand. Uh, but we need to understand that if Putin is able to bluff with nuclear weapons in Ukraine, and if he succeeds with his war on Ukraine, he will use exactly the same tactic when he comes to gobble up one of our Baltic NATO allies. So we need to stop Putin and his aggression in Ukraine, where the Ukrainians are fighting very well and bravely, and all we need to do is supply them with the weapons to win. How do you think this military success uh, on the part of the Ukrainian forces affects the, dip the diplomatic endgame, whatever it may be? 
Does it be, allow those conversations to continue, to continue, or does your understanding of the Ukrainians mean they're not stopping until they get Crimea and everything Russia took? The, there is no diplomatic game right now. Putin's objective remains to establish effective control over Ukraine. Only when he realizes that his military cannot achieve that objective will he be ready for negotiations which could lead to a stable and a just peace. So if we want a stable and just peace, we have to help Ukraine gain back a lot more of its territory. I don't know if that needs to include Crimea for a successful and successful negotiation, but it needs to keep open Crimea as Ukrainian, and it needs to come back to involve lots and lots of territory in Ukraine's east coming back under Kiev's control. Mr. Ambassador, as a final question, let me ask you about something Elon Musk is uh, throwing out in, into uh, the Twitter sphere. Elon Musk, as you know, is a bit of a hero because of his Starlink system, which has allowed the Ukrainians to communicate. But he is now offering a theory. Uh, many observers think he has at least some contact with Russian officials. President Zelensky has already knocked this offer down. But the component parts of Elon Musk's offer are that Crimea stays in Russian hands, the annexed regions take another vote under U.N. supervision, and then Ukraine doesn't join NATO, that it stays neutral. What do you make of that? I think all that shows to the Kremlin is that influential people in the West are getting tired of this war, and therefore Putin can hold on to achieve his objectives. Elon Musk did something heroic in helping provide Ukraine with that Starlink technology. But he's right now dealing with things he doesn't really understand. Ambassador John Herbst, thank you so much for being with us.